Good morning, everyone. My name is Joshua Perrin. I am Maddox Anderson. And in our, docu and in our documentary, we're going to be talking about Flint, Michigan's water crisis, its negative effects on the citizens who live there, and the lack of government intervention. We believe that the government could have done a much better job in keeping people safe and preventing the worsening of the situation altogether. Using interviews and government sources, we want to show the suffering of the people and the incompetence of the government. We will also be using mock interviews and incorporating that into our documentary as well. Many of these interviews will be scripted, but remember, have a good time. Now, John Flint from Flint, Michigan, will be joining me for an interview. Hello, Mr. Hello, Mr. Flint. What's up, bro? So, how was your life affected after the events of April 15th, April 24th? So, I mean, having lead in my drinking water is uh, not super cool. Um, we weren't like informed of it like as soon as it happened so my kid's a little dumber now um his like brain is kind of messed up um but ever since we've been getting oh my God, I just went up. we can get a small amount of bottled water from the city but it's not really enough to sustain us so. really really mm -hmm. so the city's trying but not trying hard enough is what you're telling me? yeah i don't know if it's a lack of funding or like bad management but city is just not doing a good job giving water to its citizens do you think early intervention could have prevented a lot of this oh for sure if they uh they just like stopped the lead from getting in the drinking water in the first place or at least like stopped it before it spread uh, all across the uh all across the town i feel like they could have really reduced the amount of damage done i think that's good thank you for joining me mr flynn mm -hmm. Uh, enjoy your lead water. <laughs> During April 25th, 2014 to October 15th, 2015, around 99,000 people were exposed to highly dangerous amounts of lead through contaminated water in Flint, Michigan. This exposure occurred after the drinking water source was switched from the Detroit Water Authority to the Flint water system, says the CEC. What caused this issue to worsen, though, was a lack of government intervention, leaving the city to grow worse and worse over time. In order to keep America safe, the government needs to try hard to clean up its own mistakes. This is a video showcasing the lead content in Flint, Michigan's water. Our next interview will be conducted with John Michigan, who recently moved out of Flint, Michigan. So what made you finally decide to leave Michigan? Uh, well, basically, the whole thing with, like, the lead in the water uh, and how it affected <laughs> me and my family's mental and physical well-being was a huge uh, danger for me. And frankly, I saw that the cost of potentially our health was uh, more than it would take to just move away. Okay, okay, okay. And have any of your children been double five by the way? Uh, yeah, they have. I mean, the, uh, their grades have gone down significantly. Uh, that's to say that the schools in Flint aren't even that good to begin with, considering how little people there are left. And the uh, education there is not very good to begin with. Okay. So, Flint, Michigan already had some problems before the water, is what you're telling me. Sort of, yeah, but the the main problem is the water. It's kind of leaking into every other aspect of life. Touchdown! Touchdown! Got Tennessee, California. If the angels came to me, I'd tell them. I don't wanna leave my baby alone. Our 
Our next interview will be conducted with John Flint, Michigan, from Flint, Michigan. Hello, Mr. Flint, Michigan. Hello, sir. Since the lead poisoning in the water system as of April 2014, how's your experience been in Flint, Michigan? It's been great. I love living in Flint. I can't even taste the lead anymore. I just, I don't even boil it or nothing. I just put it through my like, like kitchen strainer. Like a, like a, just like filtering all the, the lead, I think. Um, but ever since my wife went to go li live with her mother outside of Flint, I mean, it's been hard taking care of my kids, especially since they've been stupid for some reason. Um, but besides that, life is great. You said you can't even taste blood anymore. Oh no, I'm, I can't taste anything actually. But, I mean, the leads, if you can't taste it, it's not really there. Wow, interesting. <laughs> Just a little joke I used to have with my colleagues in Yale. Uh, yeah, so, uh, no, you're sissy. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't have a problem? You think the government's going to do it just fine? Oh, yeah, they should, uh, they should put money into the NFA instead. I think, I think that, like, the water is the least of the government's problems. They should probably put more, put more lead-affected individuals, such as myself, into public office. Where they rep represent us. I see. I see. That's a very, very lovely goal you have there. 